Hello and welcome to Linux Leech. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use wildcard character classes. So let's get started. Okay, as you can see on my desktop here, I've got two directories, one called copies, which is empty, and one called wildcards, which has got some files in it. So to start off with, I'm just going to open up my terminal using the keyboard shortcut, and I'm going to cd over into this wildcards directory. So cd desktop and then wildcards and I'm just going to clear that and ls so that we can see the files now there are a couple of wildcard character classes and they're called well the first one is alpha which stands for alphabetic so any alphabetic character a to z or A to Z. And then we've got alnum, which stands for alphanumeric, so any letter or number. And then we've got digit, which is a number, so any digit. And we've also got lower, which stands for lowercase, so any lowercase character. And upper, which is any uppercase character. So Let's start off with using the digit character class. And what we're going to do is we're going to list these three .jpg files using that class. So I'm going to start off by typing ls. And to use the digit character class, there's a couple of things we need to do extra. We can't just type in digit. What we need to do is we need to use these square brackets. And we need two of them. So two square brackets to open this up, and then a colon, and then we can type digit. And to kind of close that up, we need to do the same on the other side. So a colon, and then the opposite square bracket. So now we're using the digit character class. So if we just type in digit here, so we're saying list any file name that starts with a digit and let's finish this off. So let's type in PIC and then .jpg and there we go. We've listed those three JPEG files using the digit character class. So now let's try and use another character class. Let's list all of the files that start with an uppercase letter. So if we just type ls and again the square brackets and a colon and type in upper and then another colon and the opposite square brackets. So any file that starts with an uppercase character and ends with anything. We're not too fussed how it ends. So if we hit enter now, you can see that it's listed these picture files which start with an uppercase p and this document which starts with an uppercase W. Now we can use as many character classes as we want and we can mix them up but just remember that each of these uses of a character class takes up only one character position. So I'm going to show you that now. What we're going to do is we're going to list these JPEG files that have got double digits after them. So lowercase pic and then two digits and then end in .jpg. So if I just type in ls pic two square brackets, a colon, and we're looking for a digit and then another two square brackets, so the opposite ones to close that up. And Without leaving any spaces, we do another two square brackets to, so we can enter the second digit and then a colon and then digit and then another colon and another two square brackets to close that up. And then we're just going to end that with dot JPEG. So if we hit enter, you can see that it's listed all of the JPEG files that have got two digits after a lowercase pic and ends with .jpg. 
Okay, so now let's use the alpha character class to list any file that starts with an alphabetic character, which is all of them apart from these three. So let's just type ls and then our two square brackets and a colon and we'll type in alpha and another colon and two closing whoops two closing square brackets so it starts with an alpha character don't care how they end and if we hit enter there we go it's listed every single file in there apart from the ones that started with a digit now there's one other thing that I wanted to show you about the character classes and there is one other function that you can do with them and that is to not do them and that doesn't really make much sense but it will when I actually show you so if we type ls what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and list these three JPEG files here but we're going to type in a pattern that looks like it matches these so if I open up my square brackets and I say I'm looking for an alphabetic character sorry I need the colon in there so alpha alpha and then another colon and close that up with the square brackets so we're saying starts with an alphabetic character I don't care how it ends but we actually want to list these three and not everything else what we can do is we can use an exclamation mark in between the first two square brackets now what this is doing is it's saying not alpha so we want ls to list anything that doesn't start with an alphabetic character and we don't care how it ends so if we hit enter now you can see that it's only listed those three JPEG files that started with a digit which is not an alphabetic character it's not A to Z so that doesn't really seem too useful but there are some occasions where it could be useful and it could totally shorten your wildcard patterns so that's something that you should definitely remember how to do and the last thing that I wanted to show you is kind of how to create your own character classes so what we can do is we can type ls and then a single square bracket and we can actually start to put some characters in here so let's say we want to list this JPEG image here so this one that begins with a one and we want to list these files.txt so we're going to say list one and then f and then close those brackets so basically what we're telling ls is that the file names we're looking for start with a one or an f and now we're going to say we don't care how they end so we're just going to put the asterisk wildcard in there and if we hit enter now you can see that it's listed all of these file.txt files and this one pic.jpg file so you can see it's matched our pattern begins with an f or a one and we don't really care how the rest of the file name ends so if I do that again and then type in two to list this one here as well you can see that it lists the two pic.jpg file and all of the file.txt files as well. So let's do another example using our own created character classes. And we're going to look for, list these Word documents here, but not this one here because it's actually an uppercase W and let's list these three JPEGs here so 
if we say the first character starts with a lowercase w or a lowercase p and then we close that and then we open up our square brackets again and say that the second digit is going to be an i or an o and then close that again and then open it again and the third digit is going to be an r or a one, two, or three, and then close that again. And then we don't care how it ends. So let's just finish that off there. So this pattern is gonna list these Word documents here and these three JPEG files here. So if we hit enter, you can see that it's done exactly what we wanted. Now, I wouldn't say that this is a good way of creating a pattern, what I've actually just done here but it did actually work for our purposes and it is just to demonstrate that each one of these self-created character classes actually takes up one position or one character position and you can actually combine alphabetic characters as well as numbers within them you can also mix character cases, so if I just do another one, and let's include that uppercase word file. So if I just put an uppercase W in there and hit enter, you can see that it has actually listed that one as well. So that's just a quick example on how to actually create your own kind of character sets within wildcards. And now I'm just going to open up this wildcards directory and open up this copies directory so I'm just going to move copies over there and wildcards here so we can see them and I'm just going to make this a bit smaller and let's just clear the screen so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy over these three JPEGs using one of the character class wildcards. So I'm going to type CP and what we're going to copy begins with a digit and we don't care how it ends so copy those three basically because they're the only ones that match the pattern. I'm going to copy them to copies and hit enter and there we go. Just copy those three across and you can see that it will work with RM as well so if I RM copies because I'm actually not in the copies directory I need to go up and then back down into copies and let's say use the digit character class again so digit colon square brackets and then anything at the end take out the space there and hit enter and there we go they've disappeared so that's brought us to the end of this tutorial on character class wildcards I hope you found it useful if you did please don't forget to subscribe you can also follow Linux Leech on Twitter at Linux Leech and on facebook.com forward slash Linux Leech and thanks again for watching goodbye